I am sick and tired of people giving it the spiel that if you're an artist or a creative pursuing your dream, you're gonna be struggling to put food on the table and life is gonna be really hard for you because this whole paradigm of the struggling artist just is not the reality in this day and age. Hello everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to this week's video. I hope your start of 2022 has been good and you guys are getting the ground running with all of your New Year's resolutions and your intentions for the year. I wanted to come to you guys today with a video that's kind of leading on from the video that I posted just before New Year's where I went and I did my first ever art market and I sort of gave a bit of a review of whether or not I really thought that was worth it and it kind of got me thinking about how there's not that many resources out there that really teach us as artists about the many different ways that we can generate a really reliable and stable income. So I thought I would start this year by making a mini series where I'm basically gonna go through all of the different ways that I think we can make money as artists. Within this mini series, I'm gonna be dividing this topic into two subcategories, active income and passive income. So before we get started, let's just cover active income and clarify what it means so we're all on the same page. Active income is when you are performing a set of tasks for a client or an organization of some kind and the time and energy that you're putting into doing those tasks directly equates to a salary and money that you're getting as an output. Now we're going to be going over the pros and cons of active income as a sort of broad subtopic and later on we're going to be further subdividing active income into a large variety of different categories of things that I've come up with which we can be using as artists to generate income for ourselves. They say variety is the spice of life and I definitely think that rings true for active income streams. When you're generating your money via active income methods, you really are working on such a large variety of projects and events and there's so much that you could always be doing and no week looks the same, which is quite nice. I'm definitely one of those people that gets quite bored of doing the same thing day in and day out. I really require quite a lot of variety in my life. So that's something I really love about finding active income. Secondly, I think it's also quite nice that you get a little bit of human interaction when you're working on active income streams. I think it's quite common that when you're working as a freelancer, you don't really get that much exposure to other people when you are in your home office or in your studio. You're kind of solitary a lot of the time and a lot of the time that you're working, you're not really interacting with other people. So it's quite nice that when you're working with clients or organizations or so on, you're getting this real like interaction with other people and it's very like related to something that you're very passionate about. Um, so it's really nice being able to share that passion with other people and have that human interaction. Building on that previous comment, you also are really expanding your network of people within the industry that you want to work in. So for example, if you're doing like a lot of kids books and that's your, your dream is to be a kids book illustrator, when you work on a kids book with an author and you do a really good job for them, that author is then gonna recommend you to all of their friends when they start networking in that event. If someone that you trust and rely on gives you a recommendation recommendation about an artist to work with, you're more likely to take that recommendation on for your own project than you are from looking on Trustpilot reviews for someone that you've never met before. So I definitely think that networking element of working on active income streams is so, so powerful. And sort of leading on from that, it's also really useful to have a lot of projects from clients on your portfolio. I think when you have a website and you start getting into this realm of being a freelancer, you inevitably start by having a lot of your own projects and practicing your craft and really enhancing your skill set. And I think a lot of the time it's really cool and on your website you have a huge collection of your own body of work that speaks a lot about you and what your work means to you. But also having a whole other section on your website where you have loads of client work that you've done in the past, it just makes you feel a lot more credible and it shows that you can work with people, which is really important. It just really levels up your value in the eyes of people that might want to work with you in the future. And speaking about variety in your portfolio, another really awesome thing is that it really challenges you when you're doing active income streams to get out of your comfort zone and try something new. A lot of the time when you're working for clients or organizations or doing events or whatever, and sometimes completing those projects successfully might mean that you actually have to think outside the box and learn something new, like the Euphorians NFT project. I had never done anything like that before and it was a really interesting experience because I really had to rethink my whole process for that specific project and really change the way that I would approach it. And it was really cool having that opportunity to grow my skill set and become 
become more confident in another layer of the industry that I would have never tried to approach had I just been doing my own project. Leading on from that, it's also really, really cool that when you work on client projects that might have quite a large audience behind them, you get a lot of exposure from being a part of those projects. Again, like if you do a kid's book, for example, your name is gonna be on that kid's book. So for every sale that is made of that kid's book, your name is gonna be shared with someone who would have never thought to look you up before. You're really expanding the amount of people that you're gonna be exposed to just by proxy. And again, this NFT project that I worked on recently, they're gonna have a really large audience that they are marketing to when they're trying to get this project out there. And that also increases my exposure by proxy because I was the art director on the project and my name is intrinsically linked to it. Or you know, you could be at an art market and a bunch of people might walk past who really like your work and they decide to look you up and hire you for a job in the future because they enjoyed the conversation you had or whatever. And it's really powerful because these active income streams really give you an opportunity to tap into people that you would have never been able to find otherwise without having a huge marketing budget. So it's kind of like free marketing for you, which is quite cool. You can also make quite a lot of money from active income streams. And the nice thing is that you know how much you're gonna get paid and when. So if you quote five grand for a project and you know that project's deadline is in three months, you can kind of sit back and relax and just get on with the job with a peace of mind that you've got income that you know is coming soon. Finally, this one's a little bit fluffy, but I think it's quite important. I really enjoy the feeling of working with people or events or organizations and seeing that you're really adding value to their lives and to something that they would have not been able to create without you. Being able to give someone that unique and special gift of sharing something that you're really passionate with them and helping them to bring their imagination to life or bring an event to life or whatever. Being able to add value to someone is such a, a powerful thing. And I think active income streams really allow you to add value to people's lives in quite a big and personalized way. So I really love that. time for the cons because sadly no method is perfect and with every single job that you do in your life there are always going to be certain drawbacks that you kind of have to weigh up for yourself and make a decision about. I think the biggest drawback of active income streams is that they can be quite time consuming. It's not just time consuming in the sense that you are going to be working for many hours on jobs but it's more that you're going to spend quite a lot of time sending off proposals preparing for events you know writing up lesson plans like all the things that you might be doing for active income streams you're going to be spending quite a lot of time sometimes doing things that don't directly result in money straight away um, you know for every job that i've received as a freelance artist i probably sent about 10 proposals off before i got that one job some people may Maybe they might send 30 or 40 proposals off before they get one job um, and you have to kind of be willing to put in that time and effort because you know it'll be worth it when the jobs do come through it also requires quite a great deal of organization now a lot of the time when you're working on active income streams you are going to have tight deadlines and people that you need to be making happy you need to be quite reliable with your timing like say if you're teaching you have to be there on time um, you have to prepare before the lesson, you have to sort of be organized enough that you can schedule yourself without having a boss to schedule you. And I think being able to have that organization and that discipline where you can say, okay, today I'm gonna to spend X number of hours on this and treat every single day like it's a nine to five job um, that you're doing for someone else. Sometimes it might be even more than nine to five. You might sometimes have to work overtime as well. But being organized that you can plan for these things is really, really important. And that can be a drawback for some people who have trouble with organization. So it's definitely something that you'll need to learn if you want to be successful in these active income streams. A big drawback that I think can be a little bit scary for some people is that you have to do your own taxes and have a certain understanding of how that works. You know, the first time I did my own taxes, it was a little bit daunting because I had never done it before. and it does require a little bit of research. You have to kind of make sure that you really know what you're doing because it's not the kind of thing that you can sort of say, oh, sorry, I didn't really understand how I was supposed to do it. Like you have to make sure that you do your taxes properly. You do research into how in your country you need to do your taxes. It's really important if you're a sole trader or a limited company that you understand the differences between how you're gonna be organizing your taxes at the end of the year. So. But to be honest, there are so many resources online that can help you with that sort of thing that I don't really think it's a problem. I think it just means that you have to be quite aware of that and you have to always keep in mind that if you make a certain amount on a job, 
you know, 20% of that or more is probably going to be taxed depending on your country and how much money you're making over the whole year. So definitely do bear in mind that you are going to have to do your own taxes and get comfortable with that because it is sometimes daunting for some people. Quite a big one for me that I've had to sort of come to terms with since going full-time freelance. When you are working on active income streams, you sometimes have to accept that you might get really, really busy. And I know that sounds like it's sort of obvious, but sometimes you don't realize how much time it's gonna take you to do something and you might underestimate how long it's gonna take you. You might have quite a few things that come up at the same time that you're really interested in and you just sort of decide that you're gonna take it all on because you really wanna do all these projects or maybe because the money's really good and you can't turn it down because it's a great opportunity or because the exposure's gonna be great. Sometimes you're just gonna to have to accept that you're gonna be really, really busy. Um, at times you're not really, really busy and you have a really steady flow of work and you have time to work on your own stuff whilst also working on client projects or whatever events or teaching simultaneously. But sometimes you might have like a couple of months where you just take on quite a lot of work in a very small amount of time because circumstantially that's just how it goes. And I think it's just something that you have to be mentally prepared for that there might be times where you are working a lot of overtime and you have a lot of stuff to do and you might be getting a bit stressed and you have to sort of be able to bring it back to those mindfulness practices where you're keeping yourself calm and also taking time for yourself um, and being a bit more disciplined about how you're gonna work efficiently. So yeah, sometimes you're gonna get really, really busy and I think you just have to get ready for that before you jump in. And sort of leading on from that point, when you do have points where you're really, really busy, sometimes you just don't really have the time to be working on your own projects. Like before I started working full time, I used to paint for myself every single week. I would finish like a whole painting and write a short story for it and add it on my website. Like every single week I would have something. But as the active income streams start rolling in and you start getting these opportunities to really go from you know, maybe having art as a side hustle to a full-time business, you do tend to have a little bit less time to work on your own stuff. And I think you just sort of have to be prepared for that. There will be some times where things are really quiet and you have loads of time to work on your own projects. And that's kind of a nice respite from being really busy on client projects sometimes. But you also just have to accept that there's gonna be times where you just won't have any time to work on your own stuff and you can try your best, but it's also really important not to burn out. I do think that it's really worth that sacrifice. It's just something that you need to be aware of. It's just as rewarding creating amazing projects for clients or other active income streams as it is creating projects for yourself. And finally, the last downside is that active income streams are not 100% guaranteed. Like you do not know 100% that once you've finished a bunch of jobs, you're gonna have another job lined up in a month. So again, it kind of leads back into that organization thing that I was talking about earlier. It's really important to be organized and to be able to plan ahead and say, okay, I have X number of projects that are running now and they're gonna be finishing in a month or two. So I should probably start applying for new projects now to prepare myself so when that project's over, I have new work lined up. Or sometimes the projects that you've got on might be quite nice and you might wanna take a little break afterwards. Like I have recently taken like three weeks off of working and it's been really nice to be able to have that time to just like reset, chill, work on my own stuff and also just slowly apply for more jobs that are gonna come up naturally as the time goes on. It really depends on your financial position and also how you're feeling when you finish a bunch of projects that were quite busy. So yeah, just play by ear, but I think it's something to be aware of that it's not a guaranteed um, monthly paycheck. You, you do have to be making a constant effort to be finding new work and you know, ensuring that you have something lined up. Now that we've covered the pros and cons of active income, I'm sure that you guys are curious about what active income actually entails. Like what can I do as an artist to make active income for myself and to start experiencing all of these things in real time? So as you can see now on screen, I have created a mind map that covers the sort of broad categories that we're gonna be going over in the first half of this mini series on active income. So these are just some things that I've come up with. If you have any other ideas about some broad active income streams that I haven't covered on this mind map, then please do feel free to drop a comment in the section below and I'll see if I can add it in there. So far I've got teaching, freelance platforms, private and individual commissions, merchandise, events, and client or commercial jobs.
So we're going to watch this mind map evolve and become a lot more busy and full of exciting ideas as we walk through each of these subcategories over the next few weeks. Next week, we're going to be starting off this series by covering freelance platforms. I'm going to be going over all the different kinds of freelance platforms that we could be using as artists, giving a bit of an evaluation of freelance platforms as a whole and giving you also a bit of feedback on my experience using freelance platforms to generate active income. As always, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm super, super excited about this mini series. It's gonna be cool to be able to add this value to you all and share with you all of my ideas of how you can become a more financially independent artist and really break out of that paradigm of the struggling artist because really it's just not the reality in this day and age. There are so many ways that we can be generating money for ourselves and I really wanna help you figure out the perfect formula for you to actually do that. If you'd like to keep up with this mini series and also keep up with the rest of the videos that I'll be creating, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button, and also click on the notification bell to get notifications for my weekly videos. I'm also gonna be creating a playlist on my channel for this specific mini series, so it's really nice and easy for you guys to find. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.